afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. We're going to talk about the newly opened Elite Cable Park in Auburndale, and we're going to get a fall preview of high school sports in Polk County. Stick around, everybody, for this edition of Sports Central. Welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Hank Longo. It's been a while since we've I done know, the show since, together. In fact, I didn't know we were doing the show together, but I'm all dressed up. Well, you look ready, a lot nicer ready to than go. I do. But <laughs> I, I have to represent the brands, you, you know, have to Sports Central, the brand. Radio and TV, as well as our good partner at Under Armour. So, uh, so. got to represent. But speaking of good partners, this segment. We got to thank the folks at Cleveland Heights Golf Club for uh, sponsoring this first segment of Sports Central. Yeah, as we get into our first segment here, we got a great show. We want to get right to it. Uh, but Again, going with the theme of, of great partners, uh, USA Water Ski and Wake Sports, and then the USA Water Ski and Wake Sports Foundation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, great partners of tourism, sports marketing, part of the reason that uh, we have been able to call Polk County the water ski capital of the world, uh, because you know you go back to uh, Cypress Gardens water ski team, and the history, and the way the sport has been developed in yeah. this, this county. But our first guest is developing something new and exciting that's really gonna add to that. Yep. Well, Kellen Branicki, welcome to Sports Central. And uh, this is great. Uh, uh, just a new chapter in uh, the USA Water Ski Foundation and uh, partnering with you with Action Water Sports to, to get uh, the parks to, to build the new cable park. So kind of tell us all about it. Oh, yeah. Well, first off, you know, thank you so much, Neil and Hank, for having us out here today. We're absolutely thrilled to be part of this community. Uh, I mean, my favorite part, I was actually at the park earlier today, and we had a few first-timers that were there, and, you know, it's great to see just kind of how welcoming everyone's been. And, you know, as, as Neil's mentioned, we're really happy to be here because this is really a historic spot when it comes to wakeboarding and water skiing. And um, for the people that are watching that are not aware of what cable skiing is and what the park's all about, tell them what's going on. Of course, I'd be happy to. So for wakeboarding and water skiing, you really just need something to pull you fast enough to get pull onto you, the water. Pull you around the lake. Exactly. So <laughs> usually it's been done with a boat. However, with our parks, we use a cable system technology. Essentially, it's a big tower system that allows you to get pulled around the park what really the important part is, is it makes it a lot easier to get out there, makes it a lot affordable, and you don't need to have anything at all. So you show up with your board shorts, we'll take care of the rest, and we'll make sure you have a great time. It's well, fantastic. I think the, the, the neat thing about the Elite Cable Park, of course, it's at the Lake Myrtle Sports Park in Auburndale, but uh, don't try to go to the front entrance of uh, Lake Myrtle. It's actually got its own side entrance, 330 Denton Avenue uh, there in Auburndale. Uh, so obviously if there's different offers, uh, hours of operation, you guys can be over there and, and doing your thing. But uh, talk about, uh, you just alluded to it, but the, the get up guarantee uh, for those people that maybe have, you know, this isn't for people that already know how to do it. It is for training purposes and, and the enjoyment, but this is really about uh, the future of the sport in developing new water skiers and wakeboarders, right? That is completely correct, Neil. So, you know, with Action Parks, we operate Orlando Water Sports Complex, Miami Water Sports Complex, and this is our third location. And we really bring to the table our knowledge and expertise in training people and making sure they have a great experience. You know, your first time wakeboarding can typically be a little bit tricky, so that's why we have the Get Up Guarantee Package. And essentially what this is is a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with one of our highly trained staff members to make sure that we explain and really guide you through the hardest part of wakeboarding which is just getting up. You know, I always, I've probably trained probably a thousand people in, in my time working at the parks and just in general. And once you're up and on the water, everything else is easy. You know, I always tell uh, people the flips and all that stuff, that's the easy part. Once you just get up on the water, you're going to be good to go. Right. And I think the neat thing about it is the fact that, and you said it, Hank, you don't have to have a boat payment. You don't have to have two other friends going out there with you. It, it's a coordinated mm -hmm. effort to go out and practice. And uh, not that it's saying that water ski is difficult, but it, it's a coordinated it's a, effort. Yeah, it is. You got now it. you can go out there and train. So uh, not the first timers, but the, the the skilled ones and the ones looking to hone their craft, they can go out there by themselves because you guys are providing that experience for them. Exactly. You know, we really see ourselves as a supplement to boat wakeboarding as well or boat water sports because it is as easy as just showing up to our front door and then you're ready to go. 
you know, whether you have just 30 minutes in the day, an hour after work, you can pop on by to Elite Cable Park, get your session in, learn a new trick or two, and just have a great time. And then when you bring the boat out on the weekend, you can really impress your friends with all the training <laughs> you've been doing. There you go. Well, you know what's neat about it, and uh, I think this is what makes it so popular, is exactly it. You don't need to have a boat. And so many people don't get to enjoy the experience of skiing or wakeboarding because they don't have a boat. And boats are expensive these days, you know. And here, um, you can just go do this whenever you want. You don't have to worry about anything. Just show up and, it, and it's ready to go. And there's different um, ability um, courses here. You've got one cable set up for just teaching people. And then you have the other cable that goes all around the lake with all the jumps and all of that. That, that's correct. So, I mean, really, with our knowledge, again, as action parks, we understand that there's a wide variety of riders. You know, we have kids out there that are doing professional level maneuvers, and we have adults out there who it's their first time. So what we try and do is make this as easy as possible. That's why we do have that training cable, which allows our, you know, coaches to give each member a one-on-one -on -one experience to really you know, make it as easy as possible to get up and then they can progress to the main cable and it really is something where, you know, my, my favorite part is I'll, you know, see kids out there, it's their first time, I'll come back six months later and they're doing the ramps. I mean, the best part about this sport is when you do fall, it's water. So it's very forgiving, it's really easy to get good at and again, it's just a, a great time just to be out and on the water. Well, let's talk about, it's located actually on Lake Myrtle at the Lake Myrtle Sports Park in Almondale, as we mentioned before, um, and it's got the different uh, entrance, 330 uh, Denton Avenue. But this is not the only thing there. Um, so if you're not into it, and if you don't want it, but maybe you want to take the kids out there, there's something else out there for them. Talk about the pro shop and then talk about Tantrum's restaurant. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, again, we really just want to create an environment that's fun to hang out for the entire family. So, um, you know, we do have a pro shop there where if you need any kind of equipment, any merchandise, anything like that, we'll be more than happy to get you set up and on the water, whether it's at our cable or a boat. Uh, however, what I really do love, and every time I'm there, I always tend to get a little bit more than I should, is Tantrum's uh, Lakeside Grill, and it's fantastic. So, um, it really is phenomenal food and um, it is something where you're able to enjoy a fantastic meal as you're overlooking the water. You'll be able to see some riders doing tricks as well. So it's a fantastic establishment. Even if you just want to grab a bite to eat and you know watch some of our riders, it's perfectly fine. If you want to go out there and ride, build up a little bit of an appetite, we'll take care of that too. But we are thrilled to have them there. Well, it's a beautiful setting just to be able to sit outside on the big porch out in front of the, the, the restaurant and the pro shop. And I mean, it's just so peaceful and beautiful out there. It's just a great you know atmosphere to go have lunch and you like you say you go there you can eat and you can watch people boarding and skiing and and just enjoy a you know a, a neat experience out there now one question how fast are they going so for the cables um, they're actually going much slower than any kind of boat pool we typically run our advance or our, our standard cable at 17 miles an hour the typical boat is usually around 21 to 24 miles an hour now the reason we can do that is since we have such a higher pool basically it picks you up out of the water makes things a lot easier okay for our beginner cable and the main reason why you know we have it set up like there is it's actually a manual speed that we control so what we try and do is start you off nice and slow to get you up and on the water then eventually we'll get you up to the full speed that the cable's running at so you get used to that speed and again it really is something where if you've been on the boat before i highly recommend coming out and trying it mm -hmm. just because it's a slightly different experience but it's a lot easier in my opinion well, I'm glad to hear that because I've been getting increased pressure. It's increasing by uh, multiple outlets. Uh, our radio show and then some <laughs> of our other partners uh, actually issuing some challenges oh. um, against me. And I've been trying to just let them go away, but I'm not so sure that they're going to happen. <laughs> so we're going to have to get with you. And, but I want the one that's controlled down low, and then you can put them on the 17th <laughs> or whatever. But let's talk about... Uh, the timing, how many days a week are you guys open, what hours are you open, and then I believe you have two, four, and full day packages that people can choose from, so talk about that a little bit. Yeah, of course. So for us, we are open seven days a week, and this is our summer hours, so it is from 10 until 8 p.m. Uh, after the time change in November, the change is 11 to 6, um, but we're open every single day, and Tantrums is actually open until 9 p.m. as well, too. So if, you know, you 
get your wakeboarding set in, you mm -hmm. still have an hour to go ahead and, and catch something to eat. For our packages, we typically do two hour, four hour, and all day passes. They can add equipment on if you need it. If not, no worries, you're good to go. And then we also have membership packages as well too. So these are packages that I highly recommend where if you are into water sports or wakeboarding, for as little as $99 a month, you can ride it for unlimited time. And then we also have an annual prepaid as well. So really, we try and fit whatever works for you. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a wide variety of packages. And if you are curious, the best thing to do is take a look at EliteCablePark.com. We have all the information on there as well. Well, and I think the neat thing, Hank, one of the things that we've been working on, and, and I know Kellen knows this, is it's not only an attraction for visitors. It's not only for a, a great uh, on-the-water activity for residents of Polk County, but we're working with a, a number of the event organizers that are bringing their events to Lake Myrtle Sports Park to you know, in between games or unfortunately maybe you lost and you're out of your <laughs> tournament and you can go out, but <laughs> building team functions. Yeah, yeah. Can, I mean, can you imagine uh, how many of those rust mat baseball teams when the college spring training is going on or Florida U soccer with the, the number of mm -hmm. events that they're hosting there. So it's an added attraction for Polk County. It's just fantastic and, and we really appreciate it. One more time, give us that website. So it's going to be EliteCablePark.com. It has all the information. Feel free to reach out to us on any kind of social media as well. So Instagram, Facebook, Elite Cable Park as well. And again, we're really thankful to be part of this community and excited to just be here and, no, and looking forward to, to the future it's, together. It's, it's great to have you here because this, um, from how I see this, uh, is that it just gives so many people that didn't have the opportunity, mm -hmm. now the opportunity to, to wakeboard and ski and all they got to do is show up. And so I think it's really going to, you know, increase the awareness and give more people the opportunity to, to enjoy this my favorite sport. Exactly. And I mean, really, at the end of the day, what the core mission of Action Park is, is to make life better. And one of the easiest ways to make life better, get someone out on the water having a good time. Having a good time. Exactly. exactly. Well, you go back to it, we don't have beaches in Polk County. Even though some people think we do, we don't have we beaches don't. in Polk right. County. So to your point, it's an opportunity for everyone to get out on the water. Kellen, thank you again. We really appreciate it. And uh, maybe we'll get out there with the TV crew and uh, film my demise. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. I, I've been I'll talking be on camera one. Yes. <laughs> I've been talking to a few people. We have Sam and Mackenzie. We have you as well. So I'm going to be holding you guys to well, it. Well, Sam's yeah. one of the ones that's been uh, challenging me. So uh, we're going to have to check that out. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, Alan. recently we uh, hosted an event in Polk County. The Czech national softball team took on Southeastern University softball team. We're going to take a look at that action. Then we'll return. We're going to catch up with Dan Talbot, the athletic director for Polk County Public Schools. Stick around, everybody. Hank and me will be right back here on Sports Central. Well, for us, coming from uh, a winter, we got 10, 10 centimeters of snow, so it's, it's a huge opportunity to start the season, you know, so Florida is giving us the, the great, great, you know, environment and nice people here, and, and we're, we love to come here because uh, it gives us what we need before the, the season starts back at home. Very excited for today's game. We all are. We've been talking about it for a couple days now. It's really exciting to play somebody that's like, you know, not from here. So maybe we get a little bit more culture in the game and stuff like that. I think just being here in Central Florida it gives you an opportunity for those 
them teams are either coming here, they're coming to California, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to get our fir my first opportunity at. I think that it's really helped the team in the past. They've done it early, early spring, and it's, I think it's kind of bounced them towards a good conference run once all that gets taken care of. Well, it's not the first time we've been here, it's like the third time already, so I think we're getting used to it like quicker and quicker every time we go here. But I like it, the weather is nice and especially when we have winter in our country right now, so it gives us the possibility to go on the field and play ball again, so it's amazing. Oh, it's been amazing, I love it and uh, I've been able to travel along the world with the Czech national team and we've been playing some good ball so it's amazing. Like we're really excited to come out here and show what we can do, but we're also excited to learn from other people, some people that have been in the game longer than we have, so that's really exciting. We get to learn a lot more about softball, not just play it. So. Well, we've been in Canada, I've been in Toronto, Vancouver, then I've been playing in New Zealand, I've been playing in Taiwan, and we've also been around all Europe, basically, and yeah, that's about, that's about it. Well, the people here are doing a great job, you know, especially here in Polk County. I, I, I like it so much, you know, uh, we have a, a great support here and, and uh, you know, we like everything. Fields are great, you know, people um, awesome, you know, the other teams, you know, are willing to play us and, and we love the whole, you know, thing, so it's great. Right, yeah, I mean, that's what your whole non-conference uh, scheduling is. It's to, to see what your girls have uh, against good competition, and you're able to work out those kinks before you get into those games. The conference tournament games, those are the ones that count. You know, you're trying to set yourself up for the tournament and ultimately win that tournament at the end of the year to go on to the opening round in the NAIA. Everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Hank Longo. Some good footage there some from great uh, footage, yeah. back in the spring, uh, Southeastern, the Czech national team. And it's always neat to, you know, you talk about uh, Russ Mount Baseball and the Tigers and all these things, but there's so many other activities that people maybe not uh, be aware of, of so many events coming into Polk County. And, and uh, before we get to our next guest, when I finish my thought, who's, who's our thank sponsor? Thank you there. We want to thank Days In and Suites of Lakeland for sponsoring our second segment here on Sports Central. Sorry, I forgot we had to pay the bills. That's my fault. <laughs> but uh, but well, we got them paid now. So but what I was getting okay. towards was uh, all these events that are coming in. And, and one of the things that it does is reduce cost. Um, it, it increases economic impact for Polk County, but it re reduces cost for those teams, whether it's Southeastern or our high school teams. And so that segues nicely into our next guest, Dan Talbot, the athletic director for Polk County Public Schools, and probably one of the leaders in this county in partnering <laughs> with sports marketing when it comes to bringing events to Polk County because it reduced costs. Why? For the, sc or for the school board. Well, I mean, you take the track at George Jenkins High School. You know, traditionally before they had the rubber track and the great facility, we were sending 14 teams, anywhere from one student athlete to 20 per school up to Jacksonville area, and that costs a lot of money. But when you have a, an event, um, a track and field event at George Jenkins High School, student athletes are staying in their beds, sleeping in their own beds, parents are getting to watch, so it, we save money. And, and saving well, we money is also money make money. And we make right. money and save money, so, which is a win-win for us. 
Well, Dan, we always appreciate you coming on Sports Central, and again, welcome. But, uh, you know, when you look back at last year, uh, the school year, so many achievements. Um, and probably, if we need to uh, do this correctly, they're student athletes, and the word student becomes before athlete. So let's talk about the success of Polk County Public Schools. Uh, the rankings of the school district and the schools came out. Talk about that, because I know you and, and uh, everybody are very proud. Well, you take the student athlete and you look at our unweighted GPA, and the reason why we go unweighted is that we, that's what we use for eligibility. Mm -hmm. So you take every student athlete in the Polk County Public School System, their unweighted GPA combined was a 3.242. That's tremendous. Which just leads to, you you know, parents out there watching, get your student, get students involved in something. Mm -hmm. It's not just the athletes. It's band, it's chorus, it's all the things. Get your kid involved in something and increases the chance of them graduating high school. And then, then you take the athletic part. What a year. What a year. I don't want it to end. The I mean, all sports it, awards just ended a couple hours ago because it was so There long. are so many people <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. well, just wrapping up. And yeah. we, we say that in jest, but I just was, got I out of the parking was, lot. Yeah, yeah, I think there was 21 combination between championships in Polk County that were recognized in the circle of champions, and many of those were uh, high school teams that won state titles. Yeah, what, what a great year. and I, I don't want it to end, but unfortunately it has ended, and the, the fall season is upon us. Mm -hmm. we, we, uh, July 29th was our first official day for football, cross country, swimming, golf, and volleyball. Yeah, we just swimming. We just had a kid, I can't remember his name, win a big event swimming that yes. I just saw in the paper the mm -hmm. other day. And we had a student athlete from Auburndale High School mm -hmm. kick the game-winning PK kick at the All-American Cup in soccer in Orlando. So it, we're still kind of riding that way from last school year, and hopefully that carries us into this year. Yeah. Well, you know, they say that, you know, I'm in listening to some of the sports commentary that I have um, uh, about, I'm trying to think of the one basketball player that played in the uh, out east and if I heard his name, I'd know it. But, like, he gave up going pro to continue his education after college to get his master's degree. And then he comes and plays pro basketball and is a phenomena. But the whole thing was is, is ed education was the most important thing. And they say those athletes that are very good at their education are better in their sport because of that. Well, if you look at the colleges when they recruit student athletes, I mean, you take two student athletes that are very comparable athletically, what's gonna separate them? They're gonna take the student athlete that has a higher GPA, that has shown better responsibility with their studies in the school with the, so they don't increase the risk of the student failing out in college, because college is different. Um, so grades is what's gonna separate two athletes from another. Well, let's talk about this fall, and I hate to—I hate to feel like I'm closing the the door on on last year. But the, as you said, we're as we sit here today, about a week away from school getting back in full swing of things. Practices have already started. Uh, let's look at the fall sports and, of course, football. Uh, Lakeland won a state championship, and um, it, talent didn't drop off from last year's team to this year's team, and, and seems to even got better. So, talk about Lakeland first, and then maybe some of the other teams in Polk County. Uh, they might well, have a shot. Well, if Lakeland's Lakeland, I mean, student athletes want, want to go there. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you know, Coach Castle's done a great job. I think, I think the most surprising thing about Lakeland is, is Castle still the head coach? Everyone, when he won the state title mm -hmm. back in December, uh, everyone said this is it. And he's he had gonna, won what a state title in four different decades. And, so and every, I mean, what else can you do? Yeah. So everyone figured this is it, and he's going to go out on top and. You know, everyone's worried about, but he's back, and, and good for him for you know sticking with it. He loves it and enjoys it. Um, but Lakeland will be in. Obviously, you look in our county. Lakeland obviously is going to have a chance to make some noise. It'll be interesting this year because the districts have changed, mm -hmm. and we've lost Plant in that region, but we've gained Armwood. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at the district that Lakeland and Kathleen are in. They're not paired with all Polk County schools. They're paired with Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. So you have wow. uh, Bloomingdale, they have Strawberry Crest, they have Durant, there's Lakeland, there's Kathleen, and Plant City are all in the same district. So you have high quality teams, mm -hmm. and that's just to get, and to get out of just that get district. Out of the district yeah. gonna be, then, uh, then they're uh, paired up with feet. Armwood. So there's a potential, you know, either a Kathleen Lakeland Armwood showdown on I-4, which is going to be very, you know, interesting. But how do they get, how do they, how do you expand the districts like that, that they're going into a, a different school district? So the FHSA, 
used to do, they reclassify the schools based on enrollment every four years. So this was our cycle up this year. They're going back to two years. But one of the biggest complaints in the states was is the districts were uneven. Some districts had three teams, some districts had seven teams. You know, we had to beat six teams within our district just to make the playoffs, where you had some districts in the state of Florida where there's only only two teams. So everyone and, and, bo and, and both made the playoffs. Oh, you know, last year in the playoffs, you had uh, they went by a point system. Uh, there was some controversy to it because actually a team up north was 0 and 9 and actually made the playoffs versus others. You know, and you had a team over in Tampa named Chamberlain who was 8 and 2 and didn't make the playoffs based yeah, on how the do point you system. That but you had an 0 and 9 team that played every uh, powerhouse in the state of Florida gobbled up the points and the bonus points and made the playoffs without winning a game. Um, so the districts are How'd interesting. How they do in the playoffs, by the way? Uh, I think they lost. Someone, they said, someone said they won the first round oh, okay. of the game, but I, I, they're so far up north, I wasn't <laughs> yeah, worried about okay. it. We had things here. But um, there is, um, you know, it's nice when people are talking about football, and it's nice that people aren't just talking about Lakeland. Mm -hmm. um, you got Kyle Sasser over at Auburndale. They won the seven on seven Polk County Championship and there is a lot of buzz. I live on the east side of the county mm -hmm. and there is a lot of talk, there's a lot of chatter and a lot of excitement for what is going on at Auburndale High School right now. So I think um, the expectations unfortunately for Kyle in his first year at Auburndale are as the summer went on has increasingly become higher. Mm -hmm. And what position is he at? He's the head football coach at, at uh, oh, Auburn. Oh, he's a coach. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's just taking over the program. So, but there's a lot of chatter and a lot of excitement in the Auburndale community. I know that the community is excited, uh, and I'm excited as well. I mean, for me as the district athletic director, uh, I have to root for everybody. Every, everybody. <laughs> um, I have multiple shirts in my car because I don't know which football game I'm going to on a Friday night. And the last thing you want to do is is wear a shirt of that color of a team when two Polk County teams are playing. It's just not good for business. But. Well, I can extend you a invitation for your shortest drive to a game, you know, with the district offices, of course. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows I'm a Bartow guy, yeah. but uh, it's exciting. So let's talk about uh, volleyball, maybe golf. We always have strong golf uh, uh, teams and individuals coming out of Polk yeah, County. Yeah, I mean, you look at McKeel Academy, um, which is always very good in golf and the private schools, but uh, obviously George Jenkins, um, you know, they got, a, they got the, you know, it's funny, they got the transfer from Winter Haven over to George Jenkins, you know. Um, so you look at George Jenkins and make some noise in golf. Uh, Cleveland Heights, who was the first segment sponsor, um, allows us to host a lot of tournaments there and the course has been redone. So we're excited about that to get some regionals and some district competitions back in our county. Uh, so golf, will, you know, will be exciting. We have some very good golfers in our Polk County community that will chance, we get a chance to see them play uh, at Cleveland Heights when we host big events there. It's tremendous and looking forward to it and uh, the, the partnership that the school board has really extended to so many different people. I know um, uh, Superintendent Bird has done a great job of really uh, being connected to the community and I think that is felt at these high school athletic events. Um, but getting real quick, I know we're running short on time, but let's talk about some of the events that, you know, we talked when we first started uh, the segment about uh, why we go after some of these events and sometimes jointly and, and, and working together. But um, talk about some of those events that are coming to Polk County because the partnership between sports marketing and Polk County Public Schools. We'll take the all-star events. I mean, you know, um, the state all-star games. We have the cross-country all-star events at Holloway Park. Mm -hmm. Uh, volleyball all-star, the state all-star game is at Florida Southern. The state all-star baseball game is at Tigertown. And if you look at the state baseball all-star game, when we were sitting down with Detroit Tigers and actually looking at moving it there, at that time and year, the year the Indians and the Cubs were in the World Series, six student athletes that were in the World Series played in the state Florida all-star game. Wow. And we have softball out of Florida Southern mm -hmm. too. Uh, the basketball. Basketball is coming back. Well, basketball, the All Star Game is at the RP Funding Center with the Magic in, in Polk County Sports Marketing. But we just, um, the state basketball yep. tournament will be in RP mm -hmm. Funding Center next year. That is guaranteed. So That's we're where it excited. Yeah. Yeah, we all agree on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, so, and I don't know if they call it the Blue House now or the Gray House, but I it, think it's, it's still in the basketball. It's still the White House. It's still the White House. Still the White House. So, yeah. but we're excited. It's in Lakeland again for you know 25th year. Well, we're looking forward to it. Um, anything else? Uh, we got we to run, but is there anything else we need to know about before we go to break? 
you know, just, you know, come out and support the student athletes at all the events. I mean, yeah. two weeks, uh, we start our games. In two weeks, the lights will get turned on in the gyms for volleyball games, uh, in the football games, and we, you know, we need the community support to come out and, and see the, the, the positive things our student athletes are doing for this community. They work um, hard. You know, with their GPA, with our district being a B, there's a lot of exciting things, and, and we need the support of the community to come out and support these student athletes because we do, we feel we put a great product either on the field or the court at all times with sportsmanship and how we act and, and in a professional manner, and we need the community support, so please come out and support us, and if there's any questions, you know, call me. Absolutely. Fantastic. Dan, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely have you back on uh, as, as the year progresses. Yeah, All right. Well, normally we go to a package uh, before we enter our third segment. But what we're going to do today is a little bit different. In the third segment of Sports Central, we'll have highlights from the Warrior Games. The Warrior Games are an adaptive athletic competition for wounded veterans. So we uh, actually went over to Tampa PGTV crew and caught up with some Polk County athletes were at this event. So this third segment is brought to us by Peebles, but Hank and he'll be right back because after that segment, you're going to get an athlete spotlight. I don't want to forget this. Julian Fletcher, a basketball player from Vanguard School. So all that's going to happen, then Hank and he'll be right back. Fantastic. Stick around. But the important thing we're doing here today is celebrating our athletes. These are men and women that refuse to allow themselves to be defined by their worst day, but define themselves by their reaction to that day and the resilience and the perseverance and the dedication and the camaraderie and the family. You are going to witness this week a tenacious competition but you're also going to witness this week camaraderie and family like you've never seen it before. They are all competitors, but they are all now family. And they support each other, and they cheer each other on, and that's what you guys are here for, and I'm so glad you're here. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant First Class Brant Ireland will now pass off the torch to General Clark and Tampa Mayor Jane Castor to light the cauldron. Titus O'Neill also on hand. The 2019 Warrior Games officially have begun! The most important aspect of the game is that it shows how sport can restore people and not let uh, their injuries define them. So most of uh, the people that come in the military played sports before they, they, they did so. It's kind of a natural fit. And so when they have something happen to them and it changes the way that they uh, are able to, to, to uh, use their body, they find a new pathway and they find new vitality and the competitive juices are still flowing so it's, it's restorative to be able to play sports. And so we say that uh, we, we don't want to be defined by our worst day, which is the day that whenever the, you know, the injury happened to us, but we can go beyond it, and we're using sport as a mechanism to do so.
The, uh, back in 2014 when I lost my arm, I sort of um, got a little depressed. And I, I was a big sports guy growing up and I always had that competition in my life. So when I lost my arm, I thought it was over. Um, and then Air Force Wounded Warrior picked me up and introduced me to adaptive sports in 2015. And ever since then, I gained more competitive spirit, um, met a lot of new friends, um, and it just brought that level of competition back in my life. Well, we've all gone through very similar sort of circumstances. Um, I was embedded with an American team over in Afghanistan, so I worked with them quite closely. They were, um, so I've got a very good understanding of how the American military works and how some of the other international forces work as well, because of um, through my overseas deployments and services, that that's sort of, like I, I know how these guys work and they know how we work. And there's a mutual understanding, mutual trust and respect for each other and that sort of, that gets taken onto the court while we're playing the game, it's all out the window, and then we finish the game, we're back into it. We're all mates at the end, mates at the start, mates at the end. So it's, it's an understanding of, we, we all know what each other's gone through, we've all got our own battles, and we're here um, supporting each other, uh, suppressing those battles, pushing ourselves in new directions, and giving ourselves a new chapter in our book. So. My previous military sort of thing, I sort of closed, closed that chapter off in the book and now I'm, I'm in a new chapter in my life moving forward. So I've sort of closed that off, moving forward, and it just helps me in a positive sort of way. Well, we, we had, when it was our turn in the rotation, because there are five warrior care programs that are recognized by both Congress and the Department of Defense, the four traditional services, as everybody knows them, and special operations. And Special Operations Command actually is the largest warrior care program, as special ops has borne a significant burden in the last 18 years of war. So uh, when we had the, uh, the opportunity to bring the games here, it was our rotation. 2017 is when that decision was made in preparation for 2019. You always do it a couple years out. Uh, we, we knew, our commander uh, discussed it with me, we knew we were bringing it to the right place. We knew we wanted to get the public more in touch with the games. We tried that in Chicago. Chicago is such a big place that it was kind of lost in the clutter. Didn't mean the people didn't care, just meant that it was so much going on, it was hard to draw the public in. We knew this community and this area incredibly supportive of the veteran, of the active duty service member and of their families, and in particular wounded warriors, that this was the right setting to do so. We also wanted to have a, a, a format that was more of a co-host, a community host with the military host to try to drive the public into it for them to be able to see and support these athletes and their families and have a perspective of what they're going through because they're exemplars of so many more. In this special operations program, we have 15,000 wounded, ill, and injured. Our team SOCOM out here is 40. So they are exemplars, they're standard bearers for a whole lot more of wounded, ill, and injured that our communities need to support because not everything's done in the DOD, not everything can be done by the VA. We have to, within the fabric of our nation, continue to support these people. I think the amazing thing about these games, especially Warrior Games over any other of these sporting events that are around, is that we really support our brothers and sisters to be able to work around their injuries. I've seen people with one eye doing amazingly. I've seen people with no arms manage to shoot a bow and arrow uh, and just do a fantastic job. This is, um, this is not about uh, getting to the top of your game, it's about finding a way to adapt and overcome those injuries or those challenges that you've had and the support to do that is absolutely amazing. So get out and get involved. Yeah, the, the healing process is not easy, I can, I can tell you that. Uh... The, it's a long road, uh, the adaptive sports here at Air Force Wounded Warrior, it's just been, they grabbed me by the shoulders and pulled me out of that deep dark hole of depression or anxiety or PTSD and, and they, I, they brought me here and I've been 100% ever since, uh, I've had a smile on my face, um, yeah the, the dark thoughts come back into my head but then I got uh, sports to think about, uh, air rifle, stuff like that, so uh, it keeps my my thoughts off the negative and into the positive.
The fact is that if there's one thing where we can all agree is that the people that have worn the, the, uh, the cloth of their nation and gone into harm's way on our behalf deserve our support. Come out and see them, but even more so, come out and meet them and get to know them and get to know the family members that have had to bear these crises, spouses and children that have had whole changes in their relationships with their service member and in their lifestyle, where a spouse has had to give up a career because now they're a primary caregiver to a very severely injured, wounded warrior. That's the kind of thing that people ought to see and experience and appreciate, and then look for ways to support them. We wanted to set a community model, which we've done. We did so in a very economical way, so we've uh, produced the most affordable games in Warrior Game history, which helps the Department of Defense feel better about sustaining it, because obviously cost is always a factor. So that's one piece of it. The public involvement in this game and the, pub the fact that the spectating by the public's been the highest we've ever seen is another indicator. That's the success we've had, is that we've pulled the public in in ways that we never have before, and that we've been able to do it in a, in a format that will allow the Department of Defense to keep it going. The United States Air Force. The first time I played basketball was in seventh grade, and then I took it serious my eighth grade year. But before I was playing football and I was playing, I was doing boxing and then I took it serious my eighth grade year because my dad um, wanted me to play basketball and I fell in love with it. Um, basketball was just a love that I had. Um, football, I started when I was really young. I really didn't like it, but I played it just to stay in shape. And boxing, I just really liked it because of, because of the workouts. And so when I played basketball, I just fell in love with it. It don't matter if you're yelling at me or anything, I just really love the game of basketball. I just love working hard for it. It's just fun. I love watching it, love playing it with my teammates and just having fun with it. The difficulties is times management, especially when you're in school. You have to always keep school first. Um, it's just like very time management and then when you want to play and when you want to work out, that's the main part. Um, I just say you work very hard, just work every day. Um, don't take no days off. Just keep playing, and as long as you love it, it's going to keep coming to you. Just make sure you're always focused, and because if you're not focused, everything's going to crumble down. You have to make sure your schoolwork is first done, and then, then you do what you got to do on the court, and just work out, and always put the extra shots up, because there's always someone out there working hard as just as you. Um, it gave me a lot of confidence in myself. Um, it just helped me to talk more and be a leader, not a follower, and it just helped me just to talk with other people, have fun, and just um, be loosened, just be more loose. Oh, with my teammates, we're very, we're very fun. I consider them as my brothers from day one and when I met them, they're very cool, very awesome teammates. They always be there for me, even when I have tough days in my life, um, setbacks, um, they're always there for me. They're just helping me out every single day. And um, I could talk to them about anything. And then they're just my brothers. Oh, my coach, that's just, it's just crazy. Me and him have a crazy relationship. I consider him as everything. I, me and him are always there for each other. Um, we can have arguments in the next day or next hour. We'll still be laughing on the phone or something. We, me and him, he's just a great coach and just helped me tremendously over the past few months. I've grown tremendously a lot because before I could even dribble between my legs. Um, now, I couldn't even dunk, um, couldn't even touch rim or backboard in my seventh grade year. And now, I'm just, just playing really way better and um, just leading my team. I would say, like, height doesn't matter. 
it doesn't matter as long as you play and as long as you work hard, it's gonna come. Because I was always known just to be shortest on the team, but when I started working hard and be able to dunk, it made it more simple. And it's, it's just height it does not matter. It's, if you're, it's your heart. My favorite part of playing basketball is just leading them, my team and just seeing them happy, seeing myself happy, and just seeing the crowd. I like the crowd when they get very hyped off of every off of every play. I just love the game. Never give up. Um, even if you get cut, you have to keep playing and just find a different route. Um, always just keep playing and go hard every single day. When I go to college, I plan to be an engineer, a mechanical engineer. Um, my uncle that recently passed, uh, he was an engineer at Disney, and I used to always go to him to work, and I just always saw him work, and then being an engineer, and it was it's something I also fell in love with as much as basketball. Shout out to Beast Productions, they um, made a lot of videos for me. Shout out to my mom, my dad, um, all my family, they all supported me, always helped me out. Been all of my games, just helping me every single day. And um, shout out to Vanguard, Panther Nation. They always been there for me, helping me out and made me a better person. Everybody, welcome back to the fourth and final segment of Sports Central here on yeah. PGTV. Here on PGTV, we want to thank the folks at Contempo Vacation Homes for being the sponsor of our fourth segment. Absolutely, and uh, our first first uh, two guests were fantastic. Of course, Kellen talking about the Elite Cable Park there in Auburndale, and uh, you know we talked about it earlier. But if you're just tuning in. Uh, really a great opportunity if you don't have a boat or you don't have any sort yeah. of life on the water great opportunity to learn how to have some fun. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah, and the restaurant good time. tantrums the bar restaurant. and grill yeah. so if you want to do that and then of course uh, thanks to dan talbot from polk county public schools they they are doing a phenomenal job not only in the classroom but uh, of course uh, athletically and uh, yeah. so many championships last year and we're looking forward to seeing some about a week or so uh, school will start and of course, practices for the fall sports have already started, so it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. If uh, I, I almost feel like, and it's not a letdown, but there were so many championships last year. It's going to be hard-pressed to repeat that to this repeat year. That, yeah. But it'll be exciting to see if it happens. We'll still see some good stuff. Oh, happens. absolutely. Yes, Speaking of seeing good stuff, the Florida Tropics, the, the United Premier Soccer League National Champs. Wow. Their 18 first and 0. Eight, actually, yeah, 18 and 0. And uh, I think that was going into the playoffs. Um, but uh, they ended up going to a couple different, I think they went to Georgia and then they went to, uh, forget where else, and they ended up in uh, Weatherford, Texas uh, for the national semifinals and the national championship uh, game against that team out of Utah. They were actually down yeah. 2 nothing with 10 minutes left to go in that soccer game. Got to 2-1, to one, and then extra time, if you're not familiar with soccer, they have extra time where maybe a player's been hurt or there's been sort of some sort of stoppage of play. So they usually add, you know, 3 to 5, sometimes 7 minutes, usually 5 minutes. In that stoppage time, they score the tying goal and win it in penalty kicks. Unbelievable. Amazing, amazing. They have a perfect record. Just uh, we had uh, the coach on the on the show too. Yeah, right before they went right before went they off went. And, and did yeah. that. Yeah, so fantastic stuff. This was the team playing at Lake Myrtle Sports Park in Auburndale. They also have a team uh, outdoor professional team that was playing at Bryant Stadium. But now, a lot of these players could have a few weeks off, and then they'll start training for the for, indoor for the season indoor at the RP Funding Center. So I think the neat thing about it is we got a championship, but. You don't have to leave Polk County to see to good sports, soccer, whether it's yeah. amateur or professional, yeah. between all the events coming in, between our high schools, and now you look at the Flying Tigers. Of course, they've been here for a long time. The Lakeland Magic the with Magic what they're there. doing. You have the Tropics. Now there's going to be an ice hockey venue in Polk County. It's really an exciting time it's for amazing. Polk County. It's amazing. It really is. And uh, if you want to be a great soccer player, the Trop Tropics Soccer Summer Camp is at Tiger Town. And it's the last available camp that they're going to have August 5th through the 9th, ages 6 to 16. 
and uh, these kids get to receive professional instructions from the soccer players, so that's a, a really good thing. And talking about winning, what about those kids down in Fort Meade? I'll tell you what, this is the <laughs> third time's the charm for uh, Fort Meade, the city of Fort Meade. Uh, 1978 and 1999, they sent teams to the Dixie Youth World Series. Unfortunately, came away with uh, without the trophy, but this year, this team finished 23-0. and This is the Dixie Youth Fort Meade team, 12 and under team, uh, playing in the Ozone Division. Uh, they went up to Lumberton, North Carolina, and, and captured uh, that championship. And I think the neat thing about it is Jamal Cornelius, who uh, is the head football coach of Fort Meade, was actually the 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 baseball coach for this team. His, his son was on the team, and so you know he's he's coaching the high school team, but then he did this on a you know on the side or whatever, um, and he coaches that team. He actually had to miss the first two days of uh, fall football. Because he was with the because baseball team. Because he was with team. the baseball team. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was kind of neat to see because, of course, he's had a history. He he played for Fort Meade uh, for the Miners and came back uh, a number of years ago as the head coach. He played for the Florida Gators as well. And I'm pretty sure he was on one of the ball. national. He played professional. He played on the Gators national, national winning One of those national championship yeah. teams. So certainly has uh, uh, experience in, in that, but such a neat thing. Yeah, and I mean, for that little town to have these kids come in and, and gets a call from uh, Andrew McCutcheon, who was on, I believe, the 99 team that yeah. went, but they didn't win, and, yeah. you know, to have him be thoughtful enough to, you know, call these kids, I think that's very special. That is very, very cool stuff. Well, speaking of baseball, the Lakeland Flying Tigers are going to be home uh, this weekend and through uh, next week. Yeah, and they've got all kinds of things going on. August 2nd to the 7th is the Saturday Painting with a Pitch. So you get to enjoy the game in the Pepsi Pavilion while creating your own masterpiece by Acrylic Luster. So. I don't know if that's something that you're going to pick up on. And, you're gonna, and, that, that's pretty cool stuff. How they're, the Picasso well, they're, you. Yeah, and I know they've done, uh, well, I know, you know, I, you've <laughs> seen me draw. You know that I, I have nothing but respect for uh, that are folks in the, the art, that are artistic because uh, it's not me. I can't sing. I can't play an instrument. I can't draw. I'm stick figures. I can only do those well, but it's pretty cool. But you can go out there and learn that. Uh, that'd be cool. Of course, always on Sunday, they have the brunch. They have the brunch. The and then Mondays, I got the dollar hot dog and bark in the park, so that's a fun thing. And then Tuesday is superhero night where you can meet your favorite superheroes, including the Black Widow, Captain America, Doctor Strange, Spider Man, and you get to do this during the Lakeland Tigers game. It's fantastic cool stuff. Well, this weekend, as we're coming to you live, uh, um, the final weekend for Legoland Florida Resorts Lego Movie Days is going to be August 3rd and 4th all day. You can join Emmett, Wild Style, and the gang during this four weekend event, which includes out of this, uh, uh, the world character experiences and so much Lego in Florida just does it right. Uh, of course, they're building their uh, third property, their second hotel right now, but they're doing a fantastic job. And the economic the benefits that they bring to Polk County are just unbelievable. It's and it's not just on the tourism side. It also offers something for uh, competitive advantage when you're going after a sports uh, or special event mm -hmm. to bring into Polk County and you show all the inventory like a Bok Tower Garden or Safari Wilderness, but Legoland have them there. So it just, it all fits very nicely it together. Does. So it it's uh, with the last week of school, uh, before school, definitely get out there to Lego or yeah. go to one of our many attractions. Yeah, and then August 3rd is a classic car cruise. Uh, and it's uh, the first at the Saturday market. You can experience one of a kind car show and great music from the 60s and the 50s along with cruise and display of all the cars so it's a neat event it's going to be in downtown winter havens from 4 to 8 p.m and that's on august 3rd so if you need something to do and want to go check out some neat cars fun place to go absolutely and i think it's another example of our communities and how great uh, things are in polk county right now because you look at what lakeland has done in their downtown and what bartow and winter haven i could go on and on these are more activities for not only the residents, but for visitors to yeah. enjoy our community and understand why we live here because it's so terrific. Because it is, and yeah. it's just a whole nother, you know, uh, attraction. I mean, going and checking out those, I'm a car buff guy, so I like going down and seeing those cars, and you know, a lot of people do, so it's just a, a neat thing to do if you're out here hanging around. And then on August 2nd to August 4th, the 4th, um, the YBOA Girls End of Summer Tournament, so some great softball to wrap up the summer with. Yep, that, well actually the Florida Half Century is the softball, but YBOA is the girls basketball, but 
Same thing. We got there's two different events that we're looking forward to having here in Polk County. Uh, we also have the Florida Orange Blossom Series Summer Open, which is table tennis. And of course, that is located at Simpson Park, and uh, we always look forward to their events. But talking about those downtowns and some of those events, uh, we've got a number of them coming up. Oh yeah. Um. Lakeland's first Friday, and that's today, August yeah. 2nd. We've got that very going timely. on. <laughs> yeah, very good. Got us. And then the Lakeland's food truck rally, and that's Thursday, August 8th. And then the Bartow Friday Fest, and that's August. Have you gone to Bartow's Friday Fest? Yeah, I missed the last one. I went to the, the, the one previous. Uh, it was a Bartow High School Fields, you know, and, and getting ready for all the fall uh, sports. And a lot of the alumni classes came back, and it was kind of a neat thing. But uh, you definitely want to do that. And I'll mention on the 16th, if you are a Bartow uh, person and you're watching our broadcast here, um, go to the Friday Fest and then head down to the stadium because that's a kickoff classic. Uh, Bartow will be taking on Pasco High School. Ah, first game of the year? Yeah, first game of the year. Wow, it's that time again. It is. And don't forget that they have the Farmer's Market uh, downtown Winter Haven, so that's always a fun thing to do and a lot of great things that people bring, you know, the artists and all the crafts and stuff and mm -hmm. they've got music and it's a, it's a fun time. Absolutely. Well, we've only got a couple of minutes left and before we get to our sponsors and, and all that, Hank, uh, we're wrapping up the summer and of course that means we get into the fall and we talked about that with Dan Talbot, but it won't be long until, you know, we always say once that calendar turns over because you're going to get into the holidays and then all of those, uh, you know, a lot of visitors coming in, a lot of events, a lot of things coming into Polk County and we want to make sure that if you don't know about all the things coming into Polk County, you can go to centralfloridasports.com or visit centralflorida.org. But uh, we've got some sponsors we want to thank that yeah, partner with us. We definitely do. These folks make it happen. Office Furniture Depot, Lakeland Magic, Balmoral Resort, Hampton Inn, Bartow, and the Hilton Garden Inn in Lakeland. Can't thank you folks enough for all your support with all the things that we do. Absolutely. If you want another listing of all of our partners at uh, Polk County Tourism Sports Marketing, you can go to centralfloridasports.com. Uh, we always want to thank our friends here at PGTV uh, for giving us mm -hmm. the competitive advantage that they give us, uh, not only when it comes to recruiting all these events to Polk County, but also educating the uh, residents of Polk County of all the things that are going on here yeah. uh, because it really does take everyone to, uh, to generate this yeah, economic impact, sure so we certainly appreciate that. The next edition of Sports Central will be coming live to you on August 16th, and uh, you can uh, also check out the radio version of Sports Central on Talk 1430 WLKF and Talk 96.7. And this Tuesday at 735, if you want to tune into that channel, we'll have Gene Deckerhoff, the voice of the Buccaneers and the Florida State Seminoles on that show. But until then, for Hank Longo and Neil Duncan and everybody here at PGTV, we'll see you again next time.